We will now move on to the introduction of Meiji University. I'm happy to invite three international students, Hana, Garin, and Fang, who share the experiences of study at Meiji University. Now I'll pass on to Yamada Sensei. Yamada Sensei, please. Thank you, Chihara. Uh, welcome, uh, welcome, and uh, like a salam, uh, half a day. Um, welcome to today's uh, online campus business session, the Cycle Science Program. Uh, and uh, thank you for logging into this day's session. We are broadcasting live from Tokyo campus. Uh, and I'm your host from this segment, as you see on the uh, screen, that is the host number two. Chiharu is folk number one. Um, I'll be just host for your, this segment um, uh, and uh, was info session for this university and student discussion. Um, uh, this segment, uh, the schedule of the segment today is gonna be into two parts. First, like I will give you kind of brief uh, explanation, brief introduction about this university, major university, uh, uh, you know, adding to what Mr. Ito and uh, our professor, uh, president, uh, uh, Professor Daiokuno, kind of explain to you a little bit about. And moving on to more, you know, uh, direct, direct dialogue style interaction with three of our wonderful students. Uh, and, uh, you know, much, then you can get much clearer picture about Meiji University as if you actually physically visit the school, right? So now let's. Please just like allow me to start the slide. Uh, all right, amazing. Yes, Secular Science Exchange Program, online university visit. Thank you so much. Um, all right, before getting into anything in detail, I would like to show you this slide, which something you just saw on the podium of our MC Chiharu. First this. Many universities in Japan has mascot. It's a little different from that, you know, that typical mascot you see in American school or many North American school or Australian school. It's really cutie style, it's Japan, no buffy or strong. Uh, it's official mascot at this major university. His name, his name is Mejiro. Uh, it's his an owl. It's basically the sign of the wisdom. Um, it's a combination of the word Meiji, University is Meiji, and Fukuro is a Japanese word for owl. I initially thought it was Meijiro, was Jiro in Japanese, other word. is actually second son, so I thought there was like some Taro, which typically the first son, um, indicated the first son, which I've been looking for Meitaro, but there's no Meitaro. It's only Meijiro, so I want you to remember that, all right? Uh, now moving on to the, our history of this university. All right, as uh, Professor Dairokuno, our president just mentioned, this university started in 1881 as a Meiji law school in the time of Japan's modernization. Uh, these three are the, one of the key figures who established the university. And our university, like, you know, the motto is rights, liberty, independence, and self-governance, self-governance in many ways. It's not, only, uh, it's, it's not only about academic freedom, it's also, it means that about uh, resilience and self, uh, you know, uh, independence, basically, about decision, about individual freedom. Uh, this university uh, so far has, uh, it's one of the most popular university in the private university in Japan. Every year within Japan and overseas have over about 100,000 applicants a year. It's quite, quite difficult to do, do the student selection, uh, to tell the honest. And currently we have about 33,000 uh, student in total and a graduate graduate, right? It's a little big university, but we have an emphasis on small classes. So we have like seminar classes. It's more, more much closer uh, academic advising to all the students. Um, we have about uh, 570,000 uh, alumni, all, not only across Japan, it's also including overseas. So pretty, pretty, pretty we have wide range of field of uh, profession. And also it's quite 
quite very big networks, right? Uh, as uh, Mr. Ito and uh, our president dialogue mentioned, this is more in detail about our campuses. We are, uh, we have four campuses and very urban. It's in located in all the campuses located in central metropolitan Kanto and Tokyo and the suburb region. Uh, we'll get back to this one. It's more in detail during this dialogue session with our student. But at the four campuses you see here, is one is Ochanomizu campus, which is Surugara campus. It's really in the center of Tokyo. And the second other campus is a uh, Nakano campus, which is still in the center. It's just one station away from one of the biggest uh, station in the world, Shinjuku, just one station away. And Izumi campus, which is we have, uh, in which uh, we have a liberal arts education in humanities and social sciences and Ikuta, which is dominantly natural sciences and uh, we have for quite uh, uh, surrounded by nice, really quiet neighborhood. Um, uh, we have 10 undergraduate program ranging from like really strong in, uh, as we mentioned, uh, traditional in law education, legal education, then really uh, varies towards political science, like recently Japanese studies and agriculture and natural science side and technology and hard science too. And as our president mentioned, we have more interdisciplinary, both natural and uh, uh, social science and humanity mixed department, interdisciplinary mathematical sciences. It's quite diverse, uh, comprehensive university. And in terms of graduate school, we have more, 16 graduate schools. Uh, then we have, including professional school, law school too, like governance studies. So it's like, it is very, very comprehensive and diverse. We get into more about this during the next uh, dialogue session. So please, uh, uh, you know, uh, wait for a bit about it. Um, we have over 364 partner institution across the world. So uh, it's been trying our best to make our university not only international, it's very, very more uh, comfortable place and a really library place for you to study, not only study and spend your college life in here. So it's even though it's located in like really middle of Tokyo, you probably at the same time can feel at home somewhere. Um, so we have about 600 exchange students every year. Um, there are several ways uh, to it and also full time uh, being a full time student as an uh, international student. So you can come to Meiji in several, like a, a few different uh, path uh, ways. One is exchange student, and also uh, 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 come into as a full time degree seeking student. Uh, either way, we welcome you. Any uh, passages? Okay, uh, this is a student mobility chart. Uh, one, this is an inbound student, there's, you know, the student coming into our university, a top five country, many from like in Asian nations, as that's where you are right now, I think, I assume. And actually, outbound student is also, uh, we have number one, uh, one of the number one country is actually Thailand in Southeast Asia. So um, it's actually a connection with Asia and the Pacific. It's, we have very strong contact, connection. Uh, in terms of getting to this university, as I mentioned, there are several ways. Uh, one is degree seeking student to graduate, get the bachelor's degree and or graduate degree in Meiji. Second is again, exchange, you know, uh, coming here as an exchange student uh, from our partner universities or short term, uh, non degree seeking credit earning, just participating with other institutions, non-partner universities and short-term program. We have from two weeks program, one week program, several different ways to study at Meiji. Important thing probably for you to know, we have student housing uh, in the middle of Tokyo. It's like kind of, we can get back to this one uh, during this dialogue session more in detail, the several uh, different options for you to live in our campus, on campus and off campus dormitory, and also completely by uh, 
of other non-dormitory off-campus options. Very important thing, we have different financial aid for international students, as you can see in this slide. Sorry, it's kind of, we're gonna skip this. However, this is very important. We're gonna get to this point in during the dialogue session with our student. Uh, if you wanna know more, because I kind of a little bit rushed, but uh, if you can access to our official website in here, you can see more information, you can get more information about the, our university. And uh, that's more text-based text, uh, you know, text form and the sound of the videos. However, probably instead of directing you to these websites, I think you probably think kind of more exciting and interesting to have our student to tell you more about the detail about this university. All right. Now moving on to our dialogue session. All right, thank you so much. Um, still, keep, um, I'll stay as a host. Um, so here in this room, we have three uh, students, uh, one full-time student, two actually exchange student, international student, uh, with different background variety. And I'm very excited today that all of you are here to help me and help us to really, like you know, uh, introduce uh, our university to the all the audiences by your internet, right? So uh, what I would like to, to do first is uh, far from me and uh, probably in the screen on the far left side, uh, her name is uh, Hannah from Philippines. She's a full-time student in our global Japanese studies. And in the center, Garen, our exchange student from Indonesia. Uh, she's stu he's studying in a political science economics department right now. And the fam, or Nikkei. Uh, she is an uh, uh, exchange student from Vietnam and uh, studying currently in information communication department. Uh, so how I'd like you to start here is uh, let's uh, give the floor to Hannah. Could you tell us, uh, introduce us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, why you, uh, you decided to come to Japan and why you chose Meiji. So hi school. everyone. Hi professor. <laughs> My name's Hannah. I'm from the Philippines. I'm a full-time international student and in the Department of Global Japanese Studies. Well I chose to study in Japan and to go to Japan in general because I like Japanese cars a lot. I actually oh. found a job in a car shop here in Japan. <laughs> and besides that I like Japanese food. I like Japanese culture and also anime as any of you may. <laughs> So that's my reason. Thank you, thank you. Wow, the quite you know interesting, interesting. We can get to more in detail in a few minutes. How about Garen? Uh, can you tell us about yourself a little bit? Of course. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Garen. Uh, I'm an exchange student from Indonesia, Universitas Indonesia, uh, and I'm a third year uh, international relations major. I'm studying under the School of Political Science and Economics here in Meiji, and I chose Meiji because well, there was it was coincidence maybe uh, there was an opening for an exchange program in Meiji and it's for international relations, international relations major and so I applied for it and I get accepted uh, so yeah that, that may be not exciting but that's what that's what happened nice to meet you all no right, thank you thank you wow exchange student to get it open that open up somehow, somehow you let's get back to that point later in a few minutes and have our fans and Nikisan Oh, well, uh, hello everyone, I'm Fabtuena from Vietnam and my home university is Vietnam National University and now I'm an exchange student in Meiji University and my, ma and my major here is information and communication. I chose uh, Meiji University because like my major in Vietnam is Japanese language and culture, so I want to explore more about uh, Japanese cultural and language so I decided to go to Japan and study in Meiji University because I believe that Meiji University will become a really nice studying environment and moreover that I really love Japanese and anime and manga so I decided to go to Japan to explore more about anime and manga <laughs> yeah right thank, you, so thank you amazing amazing wonderful 
Um, before getting into like a you know more detailed question, all of the three students right now have that mask card in their hand. I'm jealous. I'm the only one not having the mask card. Wow. Hey. Anyhow, thanks. Uh, so let's you know before getting to like detail the two like let's work on this uh, with uh, slides and the pictures. We actually got a couple of slides that to kind of like uh, describe about your hobbies and also or off campus activity or on campus activity in this university. So this picture, this picture is Asakusa, number one uh, picture from Asakusa. Where's all my Asakusa? It's kind of this is a Buddhist temple, yeah? Uh, I guess this picture is from Garen. Um, yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about this place? Like, wh wh why did you take the picture? I mean, going, those students actually sent us the, all the pictures about kind of uh, depict their campus and off-campus life. Garen, please. Oh, sure. Uh, so I went to Asakusa this. Uh, I think this was in uh, the end of summer or of or early fall. Uh, I took this photo because I thought it looks nice. Asakusa looks nice that day. And I I didn't went alone to Asakusa on this mm. day. I went to some, some friends. There was this student buddy. Uh, that uh, accompanies all the exchange students and they made some programs to go sightseeing. And the program is to Asakusa. And after this, actually we went to the aquarium. aquarium. Uh, yeah, aquarium in uh, nearby Tokyo Skytree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it it was really fun that day. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's packed because it was a holiday, mm -hmm. a holiday day. Yeah. It's weekend or so. Uh, it's really packed, but I really enjoyed it because I get to spend some time with friends and I get to see Japan a lot more. Garen, uh, you mentioned about some student organization, students' uh, body. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little more about it? Of course. Uh, so the student body is called the supporters. Mm. Uh, it's from my school, the School of Political mm. Science and Economics. And basically, they their task is to accompany international students uh, to guide them through uh, all their study in Japan. And also they made uh, some programs. Uh, this is not the only program that they made. They mm -hmm. also made like an autumn camp. Oh, interesting. Which you can see later like, in the, they made an autumn camp to, uh, for two days, one night in Yamanashi, is nearby Mount Fuji. Uh, Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe you can see. Uh, well, no, I'm just gonna skip some slides and they have a few pictures from the trip uh, Garen mentioned about this one. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, it begins from here, this is Mount Fuji. It's, it's actually like, um, can you can we see the seminar house? A seminar house, okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yep. Uh, so uh, there is a seminar house belonging to Meiji University in the Yamanashi prefecture. And it's uh, just beside the Yamanashi Lake, mm -hmm. Yamanaka Lake, yeah. Yamanaka. And the Yamanaka Lake is just beside Mount Fuji. As you can see, there's Mount Fuji uh, on the back trot. Uh, and uh, we actually went to Mount Fuji, but not like climb the Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm. but we only went as far as the fifth station, which is the uh, lowest station. And here, here is, uh, the supporters plus the international students. Yeah. Thank you. Um, um, Hannah, you told me, pre uh, pre uh, you know, previously to me about the, you are active and kind of like, you know, uh, pr not promoting more like uh, encouraging like a uh, student interaction with student support. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that, what you do in your department? Oh, yes. Because um, I come from the School of Global Japanese Studies. Um, I think we consist of the most international students. Um, and we also hold events every now and then to welcome new students, both Japanese and international. And I help support in speaking English and communicating with the new international students in the English language so that they'll be able to understand the event more. Mm -hmm. Since before I heard that it's mostly held in Japanese, mm -hmm. but since like me, I came here with only a little Japanese knowledge, it would be like a huge help to have a translator in English. So that's what I do. <laughs> Nice, nice. So uh, yeah, it's, um, that's a quite a quite a like a, a generous that you do, like you know, you know helping other students and also 
you know? Oh, yeah. Because yeah. um, I'm friends with the student council in my department. Mm. So basically, they just reach out if they want uh, more helping hands to help out with the events and to set up the events in the gymnasium and stuff like that. Wonderful, wonderful. We just had a lunch right before this, and she kind of mentioned that she's also planning many things actually for next year too. So probably when you get to Japan, probably you can kind of, you know, really be at the event. Anyhow, all right. Uh, now going back to the pictures, uh, also, uh, I guess, Fan san, you also went to Asakusa. Can you tell us a little more about it? not only Asakusa or some other off campus? Uh, let's go this one. Uh, oh, let's, uh, I guess this one, Asakusa, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I and my friend also have the opportunity to go to, uh, to go to Asakusa about last month or yeah, it's about last month and mm. like I went it in Sunday and it, it's a little bit crowded. Like you can see the picture mm. is a little bit crowded, but Asakusa is really beautiful. Like I know this is the oldest temple in Tokyo, right? Mm. Like, so I'm really impressive because it's really beautiful and re a little bit crowded, but I have really, I had a really great experience there. And, and I also uh, have a ramen near there. Ramen. Like, Wait a minute. You send me a picture. Of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's that this ramen, then like that two two type of flavor in ramen, right? Like salt and soy sauce. Right? Soy sauce. Yeah, and I really love this soy sauce ramen. Whoa. Oh, this is really good, and I highly recommend everyone to try this. <laughs> right. <laughs> because some like words on that the seaweed there, I oh. think. Oh yeah, the name of the restaurant on the seaweed. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. So in detail. Uh, you mentioned about also about the little bit about anime before, and let's go here. Uh, probably this picture will help us to get the sense where we are too, also from campus. Oh yes, and this is a picture I took from Akihabara, and Akihabara is really near Meiji University Surugada campus. It's just about a one kilometer. Mm, so one kilometer. I, uh, and I have like about four or five times go there. I took a lot of a picture and I think this is the picture of Haikyuu. And if uh, like everybody is uh, like anime or manga, I think you guys should have a chance to go to Akihabara and this is really good. And about in the weekend, there are some cosplay there Oh, or some made coffee. Like it is also have some made coffee. I think it's really cute. And uh, if, if you guys have some time, so I highly recommend Akihabara to you guys. You actually send me a picture of yourself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing cosplay. Uh, this is not my cosplay. It's just not a wig. Yeah, it's just a wig. It's just a wig. Like, I also cosplay in uh, Ikebukuro Halloween Cosplay Festival. Oh, the, my, I, I think I lost my picture in my old cell phone. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit sad. Oh. <laughs> So I just had the picture of uh, Showa Kinen Koen, oh, yeah. the, the Showa part. And by this season, and the red maple is really beautiful. And I think you guys should go there for once in your life. So let's see the picture of the red maple. I think it's really beautiful, stunning. You mentioned it's just like a one kilometer away. So like, do you like frequently visit there often after the end of the class or so on this campus? Oh yeah, I go there with my friends, <laughs> like oh, the wow. sober times. <laughs> Let's kind of, we got the fan, uh, Garen's and like sent us a um, couple pictures from, sorry, going back, uh, Surugadai campus here. Uh, we don't have actually kind of uh, picture, but this is Surugadai campus actually, we are in currently located, broadcasting from via satellite TV. Are we using satellite TV right now? Well, why are we using this? Professor, we're not on satellite. Oh, internet, that's right. I'm sorry about that. Not the satellite TV, probably nobody use satellite TV. I don't know. Wow, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, maybe dial up, I don't know. All right, um, yeah, the Surugada campus is here, you know, located in Yochanomi, just one away. It's one of the biggest, uh, you know, tallest building. It can like either probably, uh, Garen, can you tell us about Surugada campus too? Of course, yeah. of course. Uh, so yeah, we are now broadcasting from Surugada campus. Oh no, not 
not exactly as we're at the campus, but uh, at the complex. Yeah, we're in the it, global it front the of Surigadi. It's one of the buildings. Yeah. So yeah, uh, as uh, Nikia Sanen has said that uh, the Surigadi campus is at the center of Tokyo. Yeah, it's not that far from the Imperial Palace complex. The mm. actual Marunouchi. Marunouchi is like the the center center of Tokyo where the Imperial Palace and all the big companies mm. are located. Mm. And also it's very close to centers like Akiba, Akihabara. Okay, well, well. Uh, and it's not far too from Shinjuku. Uh, from, so from, uh, from Surugere campus, if uh, we take the Chuo line, mm. uh, we only have to go through Yotsuya and then we'll arrive at Shinjuku. And yeah, it's very nice uh, in Surugade campus. As you can see, this is the topmost floor of the Surugade campus. Actually, this is a viewing platform. Mm. And as you can see, there's a big window uh, out yeah. there. And we can see Tokyo from above. And when the skies are clear, it's really, it's really nice. It's a 23rd <laughs> floor. Yeah. It's probably got a best view bathroom in Tokyo. It's, it's super nice, but uh, this is a you know the Sugarai campus. Let's go back to this campus, not Okonomiyaki Nakano. It's the other campus that we have uh, in central Tokyo, where actually uh, Hannah actually studies at. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, Nakano campus and also your department or neighborhood, including everything? This feels like um, a competition of campuses, so I'm going to do my campus some justice. That's not my intention, though. <laughs> um, my campus is actually my favorite campus. Right? Well, it's the only one I go to, but um, my campus has a very airy feeling hmm. because it's very open. It's very big. It's actually just two minutes walk from the park. So hmm. it's really nice. So even the like the backside of our campus has a big open space where students usually hang out to eat. And we have like bicycle parking area. So yeah, and boring? inside we have elevators and escalators. I mean, like every other campus, but I, I know think that's a huge the... escalator there. Yes, a huge escalator, huge escalator. To welcome you right when you open mm -hmm. um, the doors. And my department, um, we're mixed English and Japanese track. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, what I like about it is that they you don't see the division between the Japanese track students and the English track students. We usually mm. talk with each other, eat in the same cafeteria, study in the same learning lounge. So everyone's just intermingling and talking with each other. It's a really fun atmosphere. Wonderful. Wow. You know, because I only visit there once in a while. Actually, kind of like uh, the way you explained to me, I kind of want to actually teach there. Go to the campus. Here. Anyhow, so um, the other campus kind of we, we like to kind of talk about, like we're kind of skipping food and stuff, I'm sorry, and another good pictures, uh, is this. Uh, this is uh, Yamana Kokoho, Izumi campus. This is a picture of a garrison, but the uh, Izumi campus, you know, um, uh, Hansen actually, you study there, take some classes over there. Can you tell us a little about Izumi? Oh yeah, uh, Izumi campus is a little bit different from Nakano campus and Surigata campus. Nakano campus and Surigata campus is look like a open campus mm -hmm. and which is located in business district. But Izumi campus is more look like a closed campus with quite high uh, walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the class they are really interesting to me. I just have one class for a week there, but mm -hmm. I really love that that class there. Mm, well, the May um, the May Day festival festival that I really like, I really said I don't have the opportunity to participate in this festival. But like maybe next year, I really love to join the May Day festival in in Zubi campus. Because Garen's and you went to the festival, right? Oh yeah, I went to the festival. Yeah, once a year we have Japanese university, many school, including Meiji, has a some like like what kind of fall autumn festival about like you know use up one weekend and very big very big festival like mm. food strolls the student performances yeah then in now uh, Meiji University we do that in Izumi and Ikuta two campuses yeah, yeah. so uh the one, one thing is uh one major thing about Izumi and Ikuta though they got a nice post facility that student can use <laughs> 
Yeah, if you are both both bo Surugaga and in the Nakano has a one too, but uh, you got a Izumi's case got a swimming pool and others. Wow, it's amazing. Then right next to Izumi, like kind of get get to the dormitory. Sorry, kind of going back to slides. Sorry, kind of going back to slides and slides and slides. <laughs> uh, Garen lives in the dormitory right next to Izumi campus. So probably can like she can probably explain to us about uh, how the dormitory life is in there that you love. Oh, all right. So uh, I live in Meiji Global Village. Is a dormitory mm -hmm. uh, on by Meiji University, and it sits just beside the Izumi campus that we just see. Uh, but uh, it's unfortunate because I don't have any class in Izumi campus, so <laughs> I'm taking the trains anyways when I'm going to class, yeah. So this is the view from the, uh, what should I say? This is the entrance area of the dormitory. And as you can see, this is a Christmas uh, Christmas vibes all around. Uh, actually, this tree has been installed since, I, I think, uh, it's either in the beginning of December of or the end of November. Yeah, uh, one day uh, it's just out. Uh, it's just out there. So mm -hmm. the story is: I just came back from the university from my classes. Uh, it's uh, at the evening, uh, and oh yeah, there, there's like a nice tree over there, uh, and it fits the theme of the Christmas perfectly. I think actually today. In my dormitory, there will be a mm -hmm. Christmas party. Oh, you're a Christmas yeah. party today. From uh, five, uh, five, five. Right after that. Yeah. Right yeah. after that. You guys mm -hmm. are heading there. Maybe oh. I'm heading there. <laughs> oh, yeah, you should. You should. That's amazing. So, like a social event going on, too. And uh, you got a nice, uh, sorry, you're going to go in that the picture, nice view of the neighborhood, too. This one. This is a view from your dormitory room. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, the dormitory? Uh, my uh, the dormitory is uh, stands uh, in the middle of a residential area. Actually, uh, not far from the dormitory, there's like a river stream. And if uh, you walk a little bit further, you'll find a really nice park, and uh, you can spend some time over there. Actually, the park is very active, even uh, until late at the evening. People are just jogging around or walking their dogs or just hanging out. Uh, uh, it's a lively neighborhood, but at the same time, it's uh, really quiet. It's hard to explain. Yeah, basically it's at the same time lively and quiet, yeah. And uh, it's uh, the dormitory also uh, sits right beside the sports facility of the Izumi mm -hmm. campus, uh, mm -hmm. as Yamada Sensei has said. Uh, the, the facility is mainly used for sports uh, activities. There's uh, a field too. Uh, people are usually playing baseball or uh, whatever games they're playing uh, over there. Also, there's uh, a swimming pool, a, a gym to uh, lift weights. And uh, also these rooms uh, they use for many activities such mar martial arts things, mm -hmm. maybe like uh, Kendo or uh, judo or other forms of sports, sure. uh, and uh, yeah, uh, if uh, I walk from the Izumi campus to my dormitory, I'll hear people like uh, very active even uh, at at the evening. Like yeah. sports, 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 mm -hmm. and also other school faculty. That's amazing, wonderful. Um, other aspect with student life is actually a uh, scholarship. I kind of want to get into that one. We have more pictures, I'm sorry, but we kind of have to skip a couple of good yummy food picture and that kind of Broadway, which uh, uh, actually Hannah lives nearby. Then now get, get back to Hannah. The reason why bringing back to you is actually scholarship. Uh, Hannah is actually one of, the, one of the scholarship recipient and she prepared a lot before even coming to Japan. And then uh, we actually had our online uh, interview and everything. That's the first time I met her almost a year ago, I think. Yeah, can you tell us about the scholarship you're receiving? Okay, so my scholarship specifically is actually a really good scholarship that I've never seen anywhere before. Mm. Like not in any other country, not in my home country. Wow. Only in Meiji. Well, tell us more. So my that. scholarship covers first my air tickets um, from the Philippines going here. Mm -hmm. And then it covers four years of my tuition. And they also give me an allowance of 100,000 yen every month. 
So it's a really good scholarship and a really good opportunity, but you really have to prepare a lot in order to apply for it. But I'd say mm. it's really worth it. And the interview, I was a little nervous, but Yamada Sensei was there and it was really fun. It was really fun. They we ended up laughing a bit, I remember. <laughs> yeah, it was it was uh, not easy because it was still in the COVID. Uh, I guess the entry was kind of, you know, that the quarantine wasn't still, you know, strict and then we had to do everything online back then. And uh yeah, I was kind of like try to try to get the sense. Yeah, about you. But it was it was nice. It was nice. The uh, interview was nice. Um okay, I have a question to all of you. Uh, how do you study Japanese or how you learn Japanese or before coming to Japan or while you're in Japan right now? I know the three of you have a different, like a kind of like, you know, uh, levels in Japanese proficiency. So, uh, anybody who wants to start was to answer my question or like what you start, like how you study right now, how you practice now, or what did you do before you came to Japan to learn Japanese? Maybe I'll start. You're going to start? Yeah, okay. uh, because I think I'm a complete beginner at the Japanese. Actually, I've learned Japanese for uh, two semesters back in my high school. Mm. But that was so long ago that I basically forget everything. <laughs> so uh, I'm starting all over again in Meiji. Amazing. I'm starting from level one. Mm. Uh, and uh, the class I took uh, is held twice a week. And... Uh, it's basically very compact and uh, there's a lot of things that we discussed about in one session. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, uh, it's basically, I gained a lot of knowledge. Like uh, I also remember uh, the lessons that I've learned in high school again in here. Uh, and I met some really nice friends uh, in my Japanese class because uh, they're also uh, exchange students and there's, uh, Postgraduate students too in there, mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, we we get along uh, really well too. Uh, we often eat together outside. Uh, once we eat in a Thai restaurant, uh, and also uh, we went around Tokyo too. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not only the course that matters, but also like the networking in Meiji University. I think is really really good. Nice, nice. I, you know, like also studied a few other languages, then actually didn't have a guts. I really didn't have the guts to, um, you know, kind of like try to study again, then always not mastering anything. Like, I really like, you know, respect you guys. Uh, how about Hannah? You're also taking the Japanese language right now, too. Yes, I'm uh, actually uh, yes, in the course, yeah. elementary level. Elementary level. Yes, I appreciate Meiji's style of teaching Japanese because you actually learn a lot. Um, in terms of learning in the university, you learn your verbs, your grammars, your punctuations, mm -hmm. and even the nouns. But I would recommend using it in real life scenarios. Like me having a part time job in Japan really helped me a lot because I can practice the things I learned in university. Hey, what kind of part time job do you do? I'm a car mechanic. Mechanic. <laughs> wow. Yes, she she does mechanic work, and at the same time, also she, you you teach English too, right? Oh, I also teach English, and yeah. I'm also considering a third job actually. Wow, <laughs> you're really very active. Then, uh, uh, how is it like you have a skill and a profession as a mechanic? Uh, like you know, how does that help you to kind of you know really use or practice Japanese? Because mm, all of my coworkers are Japanese, and mm. none of them can speak English. Mm -hmm. So I really have to try to, you know, do and speak Japanese in order to be able to communicate to them. And if ever there's an international uh, person in the shop, I try to translate for them since no one else can translate. How about, is that the, do you consider your skill and a mechanics is kind of like, that's called some kind of one kind of language that you can um, enable you to communicate where, with your Japanese colleagues? Yes, actually, it's yeah. really pushing me to yeah. improve my Japanese skills. That's actually a very important part too. Very important thing to know. Skills or can be hobby actually will help everybody, anybody when you're studying language, second languages. Probably you know, like if you're already in this watching this uh, program, but uh, how about that? I kind of want to get into that part a little bit with your plan. Because uh, your Japanese actually level is really high, but uh, you have a, you know, 
another set of skill and also quite interesting hobby that uh, you are um, really active and uh, you know interact with a different variety of uh, people with different backgrounds. How about you? Well, actually, my major in Vietnam is Japanese language, so mm -hmm. I have been learning Japanese for about three years before I go into, before I go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but like when I go when uh, when I go to Japan, I think that I have more chance to communicate with native speakers, and I think this is the most important thing to improve my Japanese level. Mm -hmm. And I also like Hannah. I have a part time job, mm -hmm. and when I doing the job, I have more opportunity to communicate with my Japanese co colleagues and mm -hmm. my uh, Japanese speaking level is up up every day mm -hmm. like, and also I think that learning by the application is also mm -hmm. a good way to self learning mm -hmm. and uh, like I usually use a Quizlet application it's for my exactly. uh, vocabulary learning and mm -hmm. Yes, I also recommend everyone to to use some application. And about that, I think going to Japan is it, it, the most uh, important opportunities to improve the Japanese uh, skills. Wonderful, wonderful. How about uh, using Japanese or it can be also English or your native tongue too with uh, any of your Japanese peers at university or other students on campus? How about it? Uh, how about it, Hannah? Well, I really wish I could use my native tongue, but I don't know any Filipinos in Meiji University. So if there are any well, Filipinos every, there, please come. I need. Well, to... everybody probably wants to study Filipino. Well, you look on right, the time actually long. asked me to teach them some Filipino words. So yeah. it's really interesting. You should. I do. Yeah. How about Yaren? Oh, yeah. Uh, like you in the seminar class, right? Mm -hmm, I'm yeah. in the seminar class. And uh, in the seminar class, uh, there's uh, three other international international students, mm -hmm. and the rest are Japanese. Uh, but uh, in my seminar class, we rarely use Japanese, if not at all, if not at all. Uh, so there's two sessions of the seminar actually. The ones I think in in Wednesday and Friday. Uh, so in the Friday class, the one that I enrolled in uh, is. A course in literature review is a literature review in foreign language, uh, meaning English. So we seldom use uh, Japanese, but uh, I try to speak Japanese with my other Japanese friends, uh, like the ones I meet uh, off campus or uh, from the student body that I mentioned, the supporters, mm -hmm. and also my roommates too. Yeah. How about a uh, how about on? on campus Japanese practices or Japanese use? Oh, well, like uh, I am my other international friends. We are usually talk in Japanese. Ooh. Oh, yes. But it's, it's really funny. Like my friends, uh, almost of them are Chinese and Taiwanese. Mm -hmm. And like when they are talking to me, they are they always ask me, oh, which is the word in Vietnamese? And I, I teach them, uh, I taught them a lot of well, Vietnamese, and they also taught me a little bit of Chinese. So sometimes we speak a little bit Japanese, and sometimes it's Chinese, and sometimes with Vietnamese. And like in my head, they like a mess in my head. <laughs> yeah. That's a good own Creole. That's amazing. Yeah. That's actually good, though. I guess that's how language learning should be, right? Yes. You don't need to worry about it. Right. Mess it up, that's creating new languages. You can communicate with your close friends that way. Right. Um, so I guess we are like we can talk more and more. Actually, I want to ask you more question, but we actually coming to an end soon. So uh, kind of want to uh, ask you about like kind of messages to the you know all the audience and the floor. Uh, probably quick messages. Any, any any kind of message you want to give to the one right now watching over the internet, Hannah. Well, to invite you to Japan, I would like to say that Japan is actually full of opportunities and you'll never run out of opportunities. And speaking about Meiji, Meiji is a good doorway to those opportunities. They will lead you, they will help you. And Japan's not just about work, work, work. Um, there's a lot of fun activities and exciting things to do and to see and everything's just very vibrant and colorful here. So I really invite you to go here. Thank you, Hannah. Wow, how about Garen? Any uh, messages? 
Yeah, I, I think I, I have a short message. Uh, so whenever you get the opportunity to study abroad, especially if it, for, if it, if it involves Meiji, uh, don't be afraid to take the step. Yeah. Okay. How about Fanson? So I have a advice, uh, a position for somebody that learning Japanese language and culture. I think being Japan is really a large opportunity to learn Japanese language and culture. And you don't don't have to afraid of anything. And just do it yourself and come to Japan and see. I want to uh, and see you in Meiji University. Thank you. Well, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually time's up. And uh, um, if you have a, you know, like have more questions, you can kind of send by the Q and A or chat functions to them. And we have a later of Q and A ses uh, session uh, saved for everybody. Uh, thank you so much. I wish I can want to talk to you more, but if you can come to the campus, all right? We will give you answer and endless talk for you, right? Uh, thank you so much all for today. And I want to bring back the floor to uh, Chiharu. Uh, and uh, later, probably kind of move on to the mock uh, current, like, you know, sample lecture by Professor Notomi. Right. Thank you, Chiharu. Thank you so much, Yamada Sensei, and Hana, Gary, and Fang. Thank you so much. Wonderful. <laughs>